This is Banjo, and today I'm going over the Lightning AT targeting pod, which contains the CCD and FLIR cameras for tracking targets in the A10C and DCS world. The targeting pod can be hung on stations 2 or 10 through the ground rearming menu. A quick look in the external view, and we're able to see the targeting pod hanging off of my right wing. With the Lightning targeting pod added onto the aircraft, our next step is to cycle power to the targeting pod using the TGP switch on the armament control panel at which point the FLIR sensor will begin cooling for 60 seconds and the not timed out text will be displayed on the TGP MFCD page. To save a bit of time in this example I've sped this up a bit. Once the FLIR sensor is done cooling the not timed out text will be removed at which point we're able to see the air to ground, standby and air to air modes displayed on the top row of OSBs as well as the control page. While we're in the standby page, if we have a look at OSB 18, we're able to see we have the servicing option, which has no function in the simulation, so we can disregard it. By pressing OSB 1 to enter the control page, we're able to see three new options in the left row of OSBs. We have FLIR integration, start calibration, and calibration long and short. All three of these, again, have no function in the simulation, so we can disregard these as well. Next, we'll get up in the air and start going over the air-to-ground mode of the targeting pod. Selecting TGP option on one of the MFCDs will bring up the TGP page, at which point it'll automatically be in standby, and we're able to see in standby mode we can't select it as a sensor of interest, as there's no sensor to select. So at this point we'll select either air-to-ground or air-to-air, -air, though first I'll explain air-to-ground mode. Our first step is to cycle to the TGP page and set it as our sensor of interest. As we're able to see by the not SOI text, it is currently not our sensor of interest. Since I have the TGP on the right MFCD, I can use Cooley Hat Right Long to set it as sensor of interest, or simply select OSB 15 again, at which point we can see the green outline box around the MFCD indicating this page is currently the sensor of interest. At this point, you're free to slew the targeting pod around using your slew commands, and as we're able to see on the TAD page, the cursor is represented as a diamond, and on the HUD, the cursor is represented as a diamond as well. This allows you to see exactly where the TGP is looking at any given time on both the HUD as well as the TAD page. The cursor can be reset to boresight at any given time by pressing China Hat Aft Short, at which point we're able to see the cursor snap back to the boresight position on the HUD. By pressing China Hat Aft Long, you can slave the TGP cursor onto the currently selected steer point, mark point, or mission point. And by pressing China Hat Forward Long, you can slave the TGP cursor onto your currently selected sensor point of interest. The FOV indicators, shown as the four corners outside of the crosshair, indicate that we are currently in wide FOV. By pressing China Hat Forward Short, we can set the TGP for narrow field of view as well. Next, I'll use the HUD TDC to set a sensor point of interest and slave the TGP to that location using China Hat Forward Long, so we can go over some targets in a moment. Next, as we examine the center of the TGP display, we can see the crosshair just inside the FOV indicators. This will indicate the line of sight the TGP is looking at clearly, but also serves a second purpose as a sort of rangefinder. As we're able to see, the legs will resize according to the FOV that we have the TGP set up on and just to the right of the right leg of the crosshair we can see 21 meters is displayed. This indicates that the leg is 21 meters wide. This can be used to estimate the length of a target, so in this case I can be fairly sure that that piece of armor is about 7 meters long. Direction the TGP is facing in relation to north is displayed in the upper right hand corner of the display. Flight attitude, altitude, and current time is displayed in the lower left hand section of the display as with most other MFCD pages. Wide or narrow FOV is displayed in the upper left hand corner of the display. In the lower center section of the display we have our target information field containing the latitude and longitude or MGRS coordinates for the target, the target altitude, as well as our currently selected laser code. Just above the target information field we have our track type, displayed as area, laser type displayed as L, and a range displayed as 8.1. The laser designator can be cycled to an IR painter, or both, by pressing OSB7, and the designation will change from L to P to B respectively. When in use, by pressing the nose wheel steering key, the designation will begin to flash. 
and by looking at it up my right wing, we're able to see as I am currently emitting the IR Painter. By pressing OSB6, you will enter Laser Spot Search, allowing you to track an emitting laser of the same laser frequency, Amazing. for example, from a body aircraft. You simply point it in the direction you know that the laser is emitting and activate LSS. As we're able to see, the awareness cue is sweeping around to the upper portion of the display. And once it tracks the laser source, you will enter laser track mode, track on to the position that it's painting, at which point you can select track type by pressing TMS forward short, allowing you to acquire the target for yourself. When in area track mode, the TGP will remain fixed on the location that you slew it over. To use it, you would generally slew it over a target, hold TMS forward long to designate it as a sensor point of interest. Though, to track a mobile target, we need the point track option. By pressing TMS forward short, we're able to see the target frame will appear, at which point we slew it over the target, and it will track the target provided contrast and target size is appropriate. In this case, I need to zoom in a bit more within the current level of magnification, so I'll use DMS forward or aft to adjust the magnification, at which point we're able to reacquire the point track. And finally, by pressing TMS aft short, we enter inertial track mode, which will work more or less as area mode, although it will only inertially hold the TGP over the area, generally entered when attempting to lock up a target that is being masked by the airframe. To enable the use of the FLIR black hot and white hot modes, the boat switch is used in the aft and forward positions. The symbology of the OSB keys will change in the FLIR modes. As we can see in the upper right hand corner, we have our black hot, white hot modes displayed. And we also have adjustments we can make on OSB keys 19 and 20. This will adjust the gain and level depending on the setting chosen on OSB key 18. This will vastly improve your ability to spot targets depending on your current range and altitude and any environmental conditions going on at the time. And as we're able to see, without even needing to increase my FOV, we could see targets all over each of these range circles and inside those strafe pits. As I slew the TGP over to the left, though, we're able to see that one of the groups has a green X symbol over one of the vehicles in the group. This indicates that that group is a friendly group that happens to be running its enhanced positioning system. With the CCD and FLIR modes covered, as well as their symbology, we will move on to the control page by pressing OSB1. At this point we would see the expanded control page for the air to ground mode of the TGP. Starting on OSB20 we are able to see the TGP altitude advisory function, TAAF. This allows us to enter a range between 0 and 65,000 feet where the TAF warning will be triggered if the aircraft goes below the set altitude and its bank angle is greater than 75 degrees with a pitch less than 0 degrees or pitch angle is less than 20 degrees. The laser designation code is entered on OSB 18 with a valid range between 1111 and 1788. This is the frequency our laser designator will emit when engaged and on OSB 17 we have our laser spot search code which is the frequency that we will search for when we engage the laser spot search mode. FLIR integration settings on OSB 16 are non-functional and neither are the focus reset adjustments made on OSB 6. Although the TGP will make an attempt to refocus itself, the animation itself seems to be modeled, but the value returned is always the same, regardless of range, altitude, or environmental conditions. On OSB 7, we're able to find the coordinate display options, allowing us to select between latitude and longitude, military grid reference, or off, which will simply disable the information tape. OSB 8 contains our latching options, which will allow us to set the laser designator into a state of toggle, where we no longer have to hold the nose wheel steering key, we can simply press it once to toggle the laser on, press it again to toggle the laser off. Below on OSB 9, we can alter the yardstick settings for the yardstick on the crosshair, between metric, imperial, or off. And finally on OSB 10, we can alter the gain control between manual or automatic, but again, no function in the simulation at current. So far all targets have been in front of the aircraft, but now in this next example we're able to see the situation cue is rotating to the right side of the display. This means that we are slowly losing the target as it's about to be masked by the airframe. At this point it's almost directly 6 o'clock of my aircraft. And now we can see the M 
just to the right of the L designation, indicating that we are masked by our airframe. At this point, the track switches from point track to inertial point, as it no longer is actually tracking it, it's more or less remembering where it was tracking it. As we can see, an error starts to occur as the target takes a bit of a turn. And as we're able to see, as I try and point track the target again, we are still masked, indicated by the M to the right of the laser designation, so we are not able to get a proper point track on this target. At this point, now that I'm no longer masked, I can reacquire the target and then point track it as I was prior to masking the TGP behind the airframe. You may have noticed that even though we were masked, we still had view of the target. This is because the A-10 simulated in DCS doesn't really have a way of knowing which stores have been unloaded. So in that case, it was essentially thinking that I had something on my outer pylon masking it, even though that pylon is free. It's possible this is a limitation of the simulation, or it's just a fact that we have a older suite model than the newest suites available for the A-10. For the final example, in the air-to-ground mode of the TGP, I'll prosecute an attack on a ground target using AGM-65s. AGM-65 Mavericks themselves I'll be going over at a later date, but to explain briefly, the first step I'm going to do is acquire a target, then designate it as a sensor point of interest using the TGP by pressing and holding TMS forward long, at which point I'm going to cycle to my Mavericks as sensor of interest, slave them to my sensor point of interest by holding China Hat forward long. Once the Maverick is slaved on to the target, I'll press TMS forward short to lock the target, at which point I'm able to hold weapons release to rifle off the Maverick. With the Maverick away, I'll glance over at the left MFCD, which is the MFCD that I happen to have the TGB displayed on and we're able to see as the Maverick strikes its target. Finally in this example, I'll demonstrate the air-to-air -air mode of the TGP. While in the air-to-air -air mode, the target designation queue is no longer visible, so we will move the depressible pipper down to 41 mils. This gives us a point of reference for where the TGP will be looking when it's fixed to sight. At this point, I'll simply maneuver my aircraft to position the enemy aircraft inside the depressible pipper, at which point we're able to see it appear on the right MFCD. As we do, we see a cross appearing next to the target. This allows us to point track the target by pressing TMS forward. In this case, it got hung up on a hill, so I slew it over the target. As with air-to-ground mode and air-to-air -air mode, we have both our black-hot and white-hot FLIR modes available as well by pressing the boat switch aft or forward. Having a look into the control page, the only option we're able to adjust is our latching options for latch on and latch off. And finally, the laser mode displayed as combat or training is displayed when the laser switch on the HCP is set to train, training will appear, and when set to arm, combat will appear.